We are currently heading to do a tour at Ford's Theater. Not sure if they will let you film or not. We will find out. But my parents have been before and said it's a must do when in Washington, DC. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a must do here in Washington, DC. Lots of must do's. That's right, yeah. must do. Let's go check it out. All right, here's Ford's Theater. So we are going to um, see if we can film. Now it does show there is a public parking garage right next to Ford's Theater. Also across the street is where you continue the tour and you go into the place that he actually died at. Museum and theater walk through nine to four. Entries every 30 minutes. It says there's some available, but um, we did get hours online. This is what it looks like in here. I don't know where we show our tickets at, but uh, no food or beverages. So you do have the theater and museum, box office, box office, balcony and museum, restrooms and parking garage, uh, gift shop, all over here. Now, like I mentioned, I do have the tickets on my phone. They said they will scan them. Now, as one of the benefactors over here, we have the Walt Disney Company. Again, I don't know if you can film or not. We have not heard. It says no firearms, um, no food, gum, or beverage. So far, we have not seen anything that says no photos or videos. It just said silence your cell phones. So we're going to do our best at filming this. So I just asked and they said yes, photos and videos, but no flash. So that's great news. Here is a little bookstore though. That's some good stuff in here. I'm gonna see if they've got like a sticker here. This is pretty cool, a little spot here. So I would just recommend asking on if you can film or not, and it's nice that we get to, because they said just no flash. So again, I won't really say much because it's pretty quiet in here, but we'll just walk around and um, show you what they have. Rooms and elevator to lobby. Look at this. The inauguration of President Lincoln, March 4th, 1861. selfie here with Lincoln. You can easily get turned around in this place. It's big. That's where we came in, kind of in this little area with all this information. Um, this little museum goes way far around. We were wondering what Ford was 
is named after Ford's Theater, and that is John Ford. They do have a little video going on in here. Here is the artistic copy of the Emancipation Proclamation in German, created in 1865. in the White House. We have the gloves worn by Abraham Lincoln, paperweight, shaving mug, inkwell. So it does get very crowded in here. We started right over there. That's where the bookstore is in that far corner. There's some sort of quilt over here. Information on this TV. So this quilt was made in 1864. Has many well-known politicians on there. So you do have Grant signed it, Lincoln signed it. There's Lincoln's right there. There's Grant. All right, I think we've made it a generic tour around the bottom of this museum. So that's where you go up to the theater. Didn't realize there's a whole nother side right here. So we're gonna go this way. Now it is really dark on this side. These are items found in the plot to kidnap Lincoln. Some rope, knife, this knife switchblade pocket knife carried by John Wilkes Booth during his escape look at that these are all things John Wilkes Booth carried during his escape signal whistle comb oh the comb wasn't his that was from Lewis Powell Here is a boot and spur of John Wilkes Booth. Knife and sheath. And then some of the, his guns he had. Revolvers and cases carried by John Wilkes Booth during his escape. They were with him when he was caught and killed. Here's Lewis Powell, who was mentioned. The son of a Baptist minister. He earned the nickname Doc. Now they do have the flow of traffic going one way. There's John Wilkes Booth. Here is the gun that killed Lincoln. Jeez, that's crazy. 
and they just called us for the tour, so... We gotta come this way, to the theater. So that was actually just a group calling their group to go, we're gonna squeeze around. Yeah, we're gonna squeeze around. It says there are 51 steps to the theater. Oh wow, let's look at this. So here are some more items. Booth's door wedge. Ford's theater box door. And then over here, one of the several pillows used under Lincoln's head. Note the blood stains. Here is Lincoln's last day, his schedule. That is crazy. We are gonna go to the Peterson house, that's part of the tour. And this was Lincoln's great coat. It's a reproduction though. It's pretty crazy they have his schedule. All right, we are heading up to the theater. You do have to go up some stairs. Ford's Theater, April 14th, 1865. So this is again a schedule. This looks like Booth's schedule. Oh, and then over on the other side, Lincoln's. So they have a side by side of what's going on at the same time. That's pretty crazy. So 8 a.m. Lincoln has breakfast with his family. And also on this side, Booth um, rises and dresses. Here's 11 a.m. And then here's 11 a.m. Then over here, 3 p.m. Noon. Here we have 1 p.m. booth. Four p.m. Lincoln. Six p.m. Lincoln. He relaxes with old friends. It is also really dark in here. 8 p.m. Nine p.m. Eight thirty, the Lincolns arrive. Ten and ten. There he is. All right. Tour continues upstairs. So there are a good amount of stairs you go up. Welcome to the balcony level. Lincoln State Box is to the right. Here's a look at the theater. So it appears that they don't have the actual booth open either anymore or at the moment, but it's still being used, it looks like, as a theater. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's a nice theater. So unfortunately, you can't see it right here. I know in the past they would let you go through the door here and you could actually peek inside the booth, but um, I don't think they're going to let us today maybe, but maybe we can go over to the other side and get a better view of it. So you can kind of see in it there, those are nice seats, but um, here's what it looks like. So there is a big group that has a tour guide 
And she said this picture of George Washington, uh, the president didn't have a seal yet. So they used that photo when a president was going to arrive here in the theater. So it's still exactly as it was when he was shot. All right, so on the actual Ford's Theater website, the interior of the president's box is closed to the public to protect it from damage. So if you look online, you could see, well, my parents said they were able to actually go in it when they came, but um, I guess as um, it started getting more traffic, they ended up putting like plexiglass right there so you couldn't actually go in it, but you could look in it. But now you no longer can even look in it. You can just do this view from over here. So they do have a worker over there answering questions and telling history about the theater. Check out the ceiling though. Out of all places in here, you would think the box is going to be the safest spot, but that night it was not. Ford's theater website does a really good job of explaining things. The furniture are reproductions. Wallpaper is reproduced to look like it was. And that partition that's leaning up against the wall, that is also reproduced. But there was a partition like that, and Ford had it there so that you could split up the booth into two parts and rent them separately. The original chair is at the Henry Ford Museum in Michigan, but the crazy thing is there was a guy named Harry Ford that has no relation to Henry Ford, and Harry Ford originally claimed it. Claimed the chair. But then it eventually got sold at auction, and Henry Ford, the automobile maker, had one of his agents buy it. Yes, for $2,400, right? That's a crazy story. One last look of the theater. Pretty interesting stuff. Just to expand on that Harry Henry Ford chair story, right after the assassination, the chair got moved over to like the investigations department because they had to do an investigation on it. At that time, Harry Ford was in charge of the theater, which is a relative of the Ford that actually started the theater. Then once it was done in investigation, Harry Ford's wife said, well, I want that chair back because that's our theater. So she got the chair back. Then eventually Henry Ford bought it. One of his agents bought it at an auction for $2,400. And Henry Ford's not related to Harry Ford, but Henry Ford got the chair and it's at the museum ford museum in michigan and then you go down these stairs now we're gonna head over to the house so now we go across the street and now here is the house where lincoln died abraham lincoln died in the house april 15th 1865 at 7 22 a.m All right, here is what it looks like. First room. Mary's waiting room. I think I'll actually zoom out to get the full rooms in here. The injured president was carried out of Ford's Theater to the Peterson Boarding House. Here's just a look at that first room. Temporary seat of government. Let me zoom out. Furnishings and wallpaper are recreations, they just said. And then back here's the bedroom. President Lincoln died in this room at 7.22 a.m. on April 15th, 1865.
So this is not the actual bed. The bed is at the Chicago History Museum, but this is what the bed would have looked like. This is the actual room, but like I said, bed is in the Chicago History Museum. Here's what the room looks like. So you basically have to go all over the United States in order to find some of the original items. So here's a picture of the actual bed. And you can see bed is on display at the Chicago History Museum. And this is like the little back area. And then you will exit this way. And as you exit, a tower of books about Lincoln. Holy smokes. Look at that. There are over 15,000 books about Lincoln currently in print. Now we're gonna head back over to the theater and check out the museum store. So as we're getting ready to head into the museum store, just another view, there's the theater, there's the house across the street. Now, right where we started, we're gonna come over here to the shop, see what all they have. Of course, they had the one down below. Fair amount, oh, there's top hat. But a fair amount of Lincoln merch. Thinking about getting the top hat and wearing it around. I think that'd be pretty cool. Now I want to make note that they have the actual Lincoln top hat that he was wearing the night of his death over at the Smithsonian Museum of American History. And when we did the tour of that one, we got to see it. All right, I think we're gonna head out now. Sorry, it might be a little loud. There's a lot of tour buses and construction and trucks here, but that was our tour of the Ford Theater here in Washington, D.C. Overall, it only took about an hour. I'm sure you could spend a little longer in there, but an hour was a good amount of time in there. Definitely think it's worth to check out, especially for those of you who are history buffs. And pretty interesting on where furniture's at and all that, um, but for as cheap as it is, it's worth it to come to it and see where Lincoln was shot. And then also, unfortunately, where he died, across the street. Overall, enjoyed this museum. With that being said, that does it for today. Thanks for watching.